In this video, the second part of how to open a tea business, I will give you a lot of information to realize your tea dream and if you are a tea lover, you will find out what there is behind the scenes of your favorite tea shop. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nano Shan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you're new in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, make sure to click on the subscribe button and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoy watching this video. Today we are speaking about the specialty knowledge, is the knowledge for opening a tea business. And it doesn't matter if you want to open a business or not, if you're watching you're most probably a tea lover and it's always interesting to find out what there is in the tea world and in particular this type of information that are a little bit difficult to find. You cannot make a search to understand what does it mean opening and running a tea business. So I think it will be interesting for uh, many of you. Anyway, in the first part of the video, we have uh, uh, looked at uh, those very first questions that you have to ask yourself when you even start just start thinking about opening a tea shop. And also we have uh, looked about uh, how to do a consistency check. And at the very end, we have looked at different ways of sourcing your products, your tea and your teaware. Today, we are going to the next level. We are going more into detail and uh, the first thing is that you have to do when uh, it starts becoming serious, you're really, really thinking about opening that tea shop, you want to search for help. What do I mean with that? I mean, you want to search, for example, for um, workers associations, uh, depending on the country you are, there are different institutions. If you are in Germany, for example, there are the um, Berufsgenossenschaften. You want to look at other kind of commerce institution or um, uh, institution that are there to help company to establish and also for example if you um, are searching for a sponsorship or for an from uh, a loan from the bank then those sponsorship institution and the bank might provide you also with information and courses to set up your tea business now in addition to that you want to search possibly for a financial planning software so usually you can find them also for free. There are also expensive ones, but you can find them also for free and they help you to make sure that your financial planning sounds and according to the law of your country. For all that I told you, you don't need to pay. So of course you can go for consultant that ask a lot of money to tell you what you have to do to establish your tea business. But actually, if you go to this working association, this state-owned association, banks, as said, you can find a lot of very good uh, support and consultants for free. So um, once you have identified who are the key players that can help you, you want to start doing a to-do list. And I'm sure every one of you would think about writing down what you have to do. I will give you just some suggestion about it. You want uh, the to-do list. Um, of course, you want to write the task that you have to do to set up the company, but you also want to write uh, um, decision-making deadlines. So uh, a date at which you have to take a certain decision. I suggest to write a to-do list in chronological order. So when you have to do things in that order, when you have to take decision in that order, make them very simple. Don't write long description of the text, very simple and complete. If in a few days you don't come up with more than 100 tasks, when you're starting thinking about opening a business, there is something wrong, it's not complete. If you want, I suggest also using different colors to uh, easily identify different type of tasks. There are tasks that require just doing something, other that are just deadlines, other that are uh, finance related, uh, money related, so you can highlight them in different ways. Now, let's speak about an important uh, concept, very important concept, which is uh, marketing and in particular about branding. What do I mean with branding? With branding, I mean, I mean that is the time to drink some tea and uh, with branding I mean uh, basically the image of uh, uh, your business and the message that you give image and message so um, what do I give what do I mean by that I mean that uh, um, you know every 
think about uh, uh, online tea shop and uh, I'll make you some examples so that you know what I mean uh, without giving name but you might find out what I'm talking about so you might have an online tea shop that had uh, um, an image a design that is a kind of cheap um, you know not very um, clean and maybe it's a bit messy and difficult to navigate on the website there are some bugs and uh, their message is um, we are um, selling good tea for a very very cheap price so it's okay if their design is a bit messy because they show you don't don't spend a lot of money in uh, making their shop uh, and the website very nice it's just enough for being useful for being used and that allows them to have cheap price you might have though another shop that has a more um, westernized hipster design and their message might be according to their hipster philosophy we don't have we are not here to sell you um, tea ceremony uh, tradition um, we are here just to sell you good tea the focus is on the taste and not in all that bullshit that is around it another shop might have a very lean design traditional and uh, their message might be we want to sell you really the true experience exactly the opposite of the other one the traditional tea that really is sourced directly by those traditional farmers and maybe another shop doesn't have at all all these uh, uh, fancy modern uh, design uh, or maybe these fancy poor wraps they have more an image of uh, uh, truth of real pictures of farmer picking the leaves their website is full of this kind of their sourcing tea and then they their message might be um, yeah we don't sell you design we sell you tea and their message might be even we don't sell you tea we say we sell you the farmers experience anyway you want to identify better sooner than later which is your image and your message and then up from there you want to start uh, building up uh, your uh, corporate image so not only uh, the logo but also the corporate color the fonts how you want to uh, make the layout of your website of your shop the interior design so i'm making some sketches so that everything is harmonious and uh, um, makes sense together and reflect your image and your message all right now let's speak about another important very important uh, uh, step uh, that helped me a lot when i started nanoshan and is doing a business plan you have to know that when i got serious about nanoshan i spent about a month every evening four to five hours till late at night working at the business plan and uh, um, i really suggest to do that to every one of you not only if you are forced to do so because you want a loan from the bank and they force you to uh, to have one i didn't have to do one but they did it anyway and um you know i'm not an economist i'm an engineer i won't go into the detail of how to do and set up a business plan i'm not probably the right person for it but i want to give you some tea specific uh, suggestions about writing a business plan a business plan consists basically of uh, three different parts the first part and i have some notes here and i want to read them is the business idea the description of your basic business idea the second part is description of the company and the third part is the financial plan so let's start speaking about the business idea and i have a series of points here because when i start thinking about it at what i did at that time and i took again my business plan to have a look at it there was so much that i was thinking oh i will never be able to remember all these in front of the camera i have to write it down so the first point is product and supplier list you want really to write in your business plan a detailed list of product and supplier and information about those this helps you to plan the future you want to think about the customers that's very important who are your customers? how do they find you and why they should buy from you ask yourself this very question and go into details don't just say my regular customer is between 20 and 40 years old uh, and uh, um, you know with an inc medium income and you have to go really into details and ask yourself who will buy your stuff yeah why how do they discover you 
make an analysis about that. These three points, so these two points, products, suppliers and uh, customers, I actually uh, looked uh, very into detail before starting, so I was really happy with that. One thing that I'm... it's a strange team. Actually, it's not my tea, I just picked up a bag from Caroline um, that it looked like a Taiwan oolong, but it's a very strange aroma. It sounds like it's a, there might be some um, artificial aroma in it. A bit of a strange day, I will have to ask her what it's about. So, I was saying, sorry, the third point is competitors. And this is an aspect that I looked at when I did my business plan, but I neglected it. I um, didn't look it deep enough as I had to, just because I didn't have enough knowledge, not because I didn't have enough time. So please don't underestimate the competitor analysis, take it very seriously. And I will give you here some uh, detail about that. So, first of all, your competitor do not necessarily offer tea. If you're opening a tea house and you have a coffee in down the road, that coffee might be your competitor. Because for you, what you are offering is different than what they offer. If you go to your shop, you wouldn't go to there. But from another customer perspective, the two things might be similar. If it's cold in winter, I want something warm. Do I go for coffee? Do I go for tea? And uh, um, also your competitors may be very, very far away. If you open a tea shop, you may have to have uh, to deal with competitors that are in Taiwan, in Japan, in the US, in China. So you have to broaden your uh, competitor analysis worldwide, which is quite challenging, but must be done. And uh, uh, a very uh, tricky aspect is uh, hidden assets. So what I mean, I mean with the advantages that other shops have that are not easy to find and you don't realize them until it is too late. So um, it could be that in the country where those shops are running, let's, let's speak now just for example about the web shop because it's the, the thing I know better. And uh, uh, it might be that in the country where they are, there are different laws that in the country you are that allow them to do business in a different way that is more profitable and have an edge in front uh, with respect to you. It could be, for example, that they have very low shipping costs and uh, uh, maybe they're located in a country in Europe that have very easy way to send and very cheap way to send parcel over to the US while in the country you are in Europe is not possible. So you are thinking you are getting also those customers, but they don't buy from you because the shipping costs are too high. Or, uh, and this is a tricky aspect, it could be that some of those business have something illegal in them. And uh, again, I even didn't consider at all this aspect when I started Nanoshan to then realize that the T word is actually less clean than I was thinking and probably you are thinking. And uh, there is a lot out there that is not uh, uh, very legal. I won't, of course, tell you any of the information I have about that because it affects other competitors and it's not correct. But I want to give you some ideas and the ideas I give you are really things that I have experienced and not uh, uh, that uh, I'm inventing right now. One aspect might be tax declaration. You could have some advantages because in your country you have less taxes, but you could have also advantages in other ways and if your competitors make use of those advantages because maybe um, they don't do a lot of checks in their country is a, a problem for you because they can put the price much lower than you and uh, they make profit and you don't. Another aspect is uh, fictive donations. Uh, you see that sometimes uh, tea businesses offer service for tea, I express it this way, and they just ask for donations. So what do you think about those donations? Is really clean money or is money they just put in their pockets and they don't declare? Um, there might be businesses out there that just live out of it. Another aspect is fake products. Uh, this is uh, in particular affecting uh, some of the teas, like for example, poor, but not only. And uh, uh, they might pretend you that they offer a certain product, uh, but they're actually not offering it. It's a fake product. Or it could be that they are pretending doing direct sourcing and bringing you the tea directly from the farmers, but actually 90% of what they buy is from wholesaler. And uh, let me see if I have another example. Of course, another aspect is illegal marketing and illegal SEO, search engine optimization. 
a lot of that out there and uh, um, are uh, basically entities that have found ways to make advertisement and uh, improve the way they are ranked in Google in ways that are actually uh, not uh, by the law. Anyway, uh, if I found out some of those, you can find out them yourself. So make your search, be aware of it, because uh, that can be a big uh, um, hurdle to your uh, business as well. Another aspect for the business plan is prices. And here um, you want to understand uh, two things, basically. One thing is which is the market price of certain products. You want to offer green tea, you want to offer Japanese green tea. Um, look at the prices out there. Can you be competitive with those prices? With all the costs you have, can you actually offer those prices? And this is one aspect. The other aspect is build your own price strategy. So you want to start thinking about how do I convert my cost to what actually the customer paid to me? And I have an example for you. I have a friend of mine in China and he does a very simple thing. He buy tea, multiply by two, and that is selling price. He buy for 10, he sells for 20. Now, of course, that's an option, but this is really the most efficient one. There are other shops out there, much larger than what we do here, that spend a lot of money in um, actually price strategy. So that's probably not the best way of doing it. And if you have the right price strategy, you can really have an asset with respect to other um, to other actually uh, tea shop, I would say. And um, let me see. Um, marketing. Marketing is another aspect that uh, you have to put in uh, into your business idea in the business plan. And the first question is, uh, do you need marketing? And usually the answer is yes. But at the very end, you know, um, you can think, uh, I have a very good location for my tea house. People will pass by and we enter. Or you can say, I don't have a lot of money to spend to start this online tea shop. I just open it and I wait that Google rank me and then people will find me on Google. But the true reality is that if you have a very good location, you have to pay also a very, very high rent. So you're actually paying for your marketing and either you owe the location, otherwise it can be really expensive to sustain it. And Google will rank you only when you're famous. Google will not rank you if you're not famous at all and you have to make yourself famous. So you need marketing. And uh, um, for marketing, you have two options. You have free of charge marketing and marketing you pay for. And you want to make uh, um, a little bit of uh, um, a trade between the two and decide what to do. I will tell you more uh, later on. So what you want to do anyway is list all the possibilities you have to do marketing, study each of them, have a look what your competitors do, which are their marketing tool, and then decide what to go for. All right, this was business idea, the first part of your business plan. The next part is describing your company. And here I say I won't go into as many details, but I want to give you some information and some ideas about it that were useful for me. The first thing that we have also discussed the last time is your partners and also your employees. So once you have identified your partners and your employees, still need a bit of tea because my mouth is getting dry, despite the taste is as it is. And uh, um, you want to make an analysis of your partner and of your employees. What do I mean with analysis? I mean that you want to um, really write down and ask them and understand which availability they have in terms of time. Another aspect is you want to understand which are the benefits for the company of having them on board and which are the benefits for them to understand that they will stay with you on the long term. You also want to understand their cost. If it is a, cost, a partner, it means part of the revenues goes to him. If it is an employee, you have to pay for him, analyze very well how much does it cost. And the very least is also very important. You have to understand which are the knowledge and the skills that that person have. And both which are the knowledge and the skills that you need and which are the knowledge and the skills that that person have. I can make you an example. Um, for example, for an online shop, you, need, uh, you might need uh, a, a website developer. At the very beginning, I need a search. I identified one. He 
said uh, he make an estimate for uh, the design of the website he said it will take about four weeks it took more than four months and it was so it was so painful to go through that process now after many years and having changed a few designer we have a new designer and she is just great she's probably the best uh, person working for Nanoshan, including myself, in terms of knowledge about what she's actually doing and is such a reliable person. You know, you tell her what to do, she understands and she make it. The other guys, you tell them what to do, they don't understand, they pretend understanding and they have to do it a thousand times until you get it right. So another um, aspect, let me see what I wrote here. Mm. So, ta -ta -ta. Yeah, so another thing is that if you have a physical shop, of course, you want to ask yourself who will run the shop. Uh, if it is you, you will have enough time for all the rest that you have to do. So you need to do a time uh, resources plan. You want to list the different person, allocate the task to each of them, both the initial tasks and the recurring one, and then understand if that's sustainable. Is it in the budget of the time that people have available or not? And uh, um, other two aspects you want to put in the company, in the company section. One is the legal form. There are many options there for your legal form of the company, advantages and disadvantages. It's easy to get advice about that. Go to those institutions that I mentioned at the very beginning, and they will help you understanding which is the right uh, legal entity for your uh, business. And another aspect, you want to check what you have to do uh, for the law, you know, if you open a company, you want to check which are the regulations for accounting, for insurances, which insurance you have to open. I think about uh, food management, uh, think about import export, uh, think about custom duties uh, at the very least. So you want to understand for each of them, which are the regulation and understand what you have to do. All right, so sorry, a lot of information. Uh, this was about uh, uh, the first two parts of the business plan. And now let's speak again about uh, advertisement, actually. And as I told you before, uh, you can have a good location. You might wait that uh, Google uh, does the job for you, but it will never work out. So uh, you have different options for marketing. Just to mention a few, of course, you have uh, social media, you have uh, Facebook and Google ads, uh, you have flyers. If you have a physical shop, you can distribute flyers. You can even do physical ads in your city. You can also go for uh, participating in tea and food fairs. Many tea shops that I know and other similar shops were successful in going to this tea uh, coffee, chocolate, uh, fine dining uh, fairs and uh, presenting their business. There is time consuming, but it work out well. You have YouTube and uh, you have a uh, um, reselling platform that do uh, advertisement for you, for example, Amazon, and uh, you can have a safe search engine optimization. So uh, you want to do this list. Some of them are free of charge if you do that themselves, some other cost of money and you want to understand if there is a return of investment. It means if the money and the time you spend for those marketing is really worth spending. If, for example, um, think about Google and Facebook ads. Most of the money is done by Google and Facebook. They offer you ads because they want to make money out of it. This means that most of the people that put their ads with Facebook and Google don't make money but lose money now if you're able to do it yourself you can give it a try if uh, uh, you have you need support you need a consultant for doing uh, google ads facebook ads uh, uh, search engine optimization uh, the odds that you are really getting a return of investment are very little and um, our personal experience you know at the very beginning we opened the we opened the shop we didn't do a lot of marketing and in fact we even didn't get a lot of uh, um, a lot of orders at all uh, we tried to do search engine optimization google facebook nothing really worked out well yes we got an increase but it costed also a lot of money and despite that all the time i spent in that and getting consultant also you know i know people that manage uh, for example with facebook had to get something out of them but uh, uh, it was really hard and they invested a lot of money at the beginning. So another um, 
thing that happened then is that at a certain point we opened a tea house and with opening the tea house we got an automatic uh, uh, form of advertisement because people even buying online they were seen behind Nanoshan there is a physical tea house in downtown Berlin it was a way of uh, trust you know um, so we built up this trust and even if the tea house now is closed we still profit out of it for sure and then when we closed the tea house I decided to start uh, the uh, to revamp the YouTube channel I didn't think at it about uh, uh, really a way of doing marketing and basically was missing the contact with the um, customers but then it turned out that actually it helps also uh, sales the return of investment is very little like I have to say if I would have to pay myself just a few euros for every hour I spend for the YouTube channel would be a great loss but as a matter of fact it's kind of fun I enjoy doing it of course I don't pay myself for doing it and uh, it's uh, um, working fine makes fun bring some uh, uh, customers and uh, uh, people are happy and can learn something about the knowledge so try to find your way for doing marketing but think at the very beginning and also when you do marketing before opening your tea shop think about if you will have enough time to sustain that marketing afterwards if you spend now three hours a day on your social media and posting pictures and uh, editing pictures to be posted and so on when you will start your business if you have to spend eight hours a day in the shop and do all the back shop and so on you won't have time for it so at the very least i want to speak about uh, probably the most important aspect that is um, finance you know that um, is a tea dream right you want to open a tea business and you have a tea dream and that tea dream can become a nightmare if uh, your calculations are wrong and you start losing a lot of money or all the money you have invested never come back so uh, for the financial plan there are software available you can do everything in excel if you want but you have to implement all the rules and regulations that are applicable in your country it might be tricky so uh, check out for some software a financial plan consists actually of three different parts the first part is the initial investment all the money you have to put in before you even open then there is profitability and then there is liquidity so let's look quickly about each of them the um, initial investment you want to make a list that is as complete as possible you don't want to miss anything because you want you don't want to realize why you buy things that you don't have enough money to continue so uh, there is nothing more to say than that uh, you know try to make a complete list of all the costs that you have at the very beginning you don't have to put them in time order just a list with all the costs make the sum and check that you can sustain those costs when we speak about profitability and liquidity is a little bit of a tricky aspect because they are not the same a company is profitable is after all the taxes you make a profit liquidity or uh, if you want also cash flow is the ability of paying the bills so you can do profit at the end of the year but maybe during that year at a certain point of time you don't have enough money to pay your bills and you might be in troubles so there are different parts of the financial plan you can find all the information online and you want to do them uh, both by the way let's speak about profitability let's say that you are not interested in it because you open an online shop it has little expensive and you don't care about really doing money well the state where you are might uh, care uh, there are states in which there are uh, laws that uh, um, do not allow to make a business that have loss so if you have a loss the first year the second year the third year at a certain point the finance officer may come to you and tell you you cannot do that you have to make profit next year otherwise you close and you don't want to to do that so find out uh, uh, if this is the case in your country and make sure that you do profit if it is required even if you don't care all right um, one important aspect that I want to tell you when you do a financial plan you have to make some assumptions of course you have to assume for example how many customers you will get uh, which is your average order and by the way <laughs> let's speak about average order um, what do you think which is the average order in euro that Nanoshan get on our shop do you know that well I know it of course because we are statistics so let's do like that the first of you that in the description below guess which is our average order value on our shop within let's say plus minus three euros we'll get a 20 euro voucher for the Nanoshan shop 
let's give it a try write it down and the first guess i will let you know let's say um in 2020 up to now in 2020 which is the uh, average order that we get now continue you do all the, these assumptions and um with the best the best guess that you can you don't want to make only one guess you also want to assess the risk that this guess is wrong if you assume that in your tea shop you get uh, uh, 20 people every day or you get 20 orders every day which are the odds that instead of 20 there are maybe 10 or maybe 5 of course if you open a tea house in new york city you will never have zero people coming in unless there is covid 19 and you have to close but let's forget this for a second and uh, you uh, have to make a worst case assumption you have to calculate your reference financial plan and then you want a very worst case that is still reasonable you know you have your shop in new york you cannot assume you have zero customer assume some and then you want to see how worse it can get the total can you sustain that loss is the risk that you really want to take and uh, be aware don't be too optimistic right is a hard uh, business for sure and um yeah um uh, yeah this is the, the worst case analysis that you have to do i'm completing these uh, uh, with these worst case analysis but what i want to tell you is we have been doing it for some years it is a lot of fun no matter if you really want to do money or uh, not uh, um, it is a great way of sharing tea knowledge you can share the knowledge with friends but when you have a business you can really reach out that's the reason why we have done it and that's the reason why i'm doing this video and revealing to you all this information because i want that there are more good tea businesses out there so that every one of us can profit and the worldwide the tea knowledge and tea culture and tea art can increase and broaden thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe our channel if you haven't done it so and please to give us a thumbs up if you haven't done it yet and you have enjoyed watching this video. Thanks a lot and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.